We've all had one. That persistently broody hen that won't even lay eggs and sits in the nesting box day and night, shrieking at anyone that comes near. While a broody hen can be annoying, she can also be a great way to add some new chicks to your flock each year, or even make a little money to help pay for your feed. In this video, you'll learn exactly how to hatch eggs from a broody hen. Although I do have a cheap incubator, I prefer hatching chicks under a mama hen. It's a lot less work than constantly trying to remember to check the settings and adjust the humidity in an incubator, and turning the eggs three to five times a day if you don't have a turner. I usually have a higher hatch rate using a broody hen than an incubator. New chicks are also less maintenance when they have the mom to take care of them, keep them warm, and teach them how and what to eat and drink. I've hatched out as many as 65 chicks a year just under broody hens, plenty to replenish my flock, sell some to pay for my feed, and have some young roosters left over to raise for me. While many hens will go broody off and on in the spring and summer, for hatching chicks, you want a hen that will stick with it the whole 21 days and actually hatch out her chicks, not just give up part way. A hen that continues sitting on a nest day and night, even after you remove the eggs, is a good bet. She will growl when anyone gets too close. Any breed that has gone seriously broody can be used to hatch out chicks. If you're looking to add a few broody hens to your flock, breeds most likely to go broody include buff Orpingtons, they're my favorite, Cochins, Silkies, Brahmas, and many random breeds. My best mama hen ever hatched multiple clutches of eggs in a year. She was actually a barred rock, a breed that does not very often go broody. I've also hatched eggs under Phoenix and Easter Egger hens. Breeds least likely to go broody include most commercial hybrids and lighter weight laying breeds. The Buff Orpingtons have been the most reliable at hatching eggs for me, and I always keep some in my flock just for that purpose. A hen doesn't need to hatch her own eggs. You can give her any eggs you choose. In order for eggs to be fertile, the hen needs to have been exposed to a rooster within the last one and a half to two weeks. Eggs for hatching should be less than two weeks old. Fresher eggs will have the highest hatch rate. Eggs that are going to be hatched should be stored at room temperature with the blunt ends up. If you have a slightly cooler place to store them, that's even better, but they should not be refrigerated. Most chicken breeds will happily cross with each other, giving you a barnyard mix if you hatch those eggs. These mixed breed chickens can make some of the best layers, but they're harder to market if you want to sell your extras. You might want to separate out the rooster and hens you want to save eggs from. Or an easier option to get purebred hatching eggs is to only keep roosters of a single breed that lays a color of eggs different from the rest of your flock. For example, you might have hens that lay blue, light brown, dark brown, and white eggs, but your rooster is from the breed that lays light brown eggs. That way, when you save the light brown eggs for hatching, you know that they are purebreds. Last year, all in the same coop, I had buff Orpingtons that lay light brown eggs, red sex lengths that lay light brown eggs, and illusions that lay white eggs, Easter eggers that lay blue eggs, and silver laced Wyandots that lay darker brown eggs. My roosters were both Easter eggers. Since the only roosters in the pen were Easter eggers, I knew that when I collected the blue eggs for hatching, they would be purebred Easter eggers. Or as purebred as Easter eggers can get. I actually have an article on my website about the difference between an Easter egger and an Americana, and why most chicks labeled as Americanas are really Easter eggers. I'll put a link to that in the description. But anyway, to get your hen to actually stay on the eggs, I've had the best luck when they're contained in a small space, such as a large dog crate. I've also used hay bales to make nesting spots in different corners of my barn, which worked fine once the hen decided to stay there. It can take a lot of repetition putting her back on the nest. When using a dog crate, I put a shallow 12 by 12 inch cardboard box in the back of the crate with some hay in it. I place food and water for the hen in the front of the crate. An average large breed hen can sit on about 14 eggs, while a bantam can just sit on a few. The eggs should all fit completely underneath her. A hen will rotate the eggs underneath her, changing which side is facing up throughout the day, and also moving the eggs around to different positions underneath her. And if the egg's sticking out, because there are too many underneath her, they can get too cold and won't hatch right. If you're hatching valuable eggs, you might want to start your hen with a clutch of artificial eggs. 
Replacing them with good eggs once she's stayed on the nest for one to two days. Sometimes I find that my hens are more likely to set if I give them the eggs right in their nesting box to start with. I mark the eggs with an X so they don't get mixed up if another hen sneaks in and lays an egg in that nesting box. Leave the hen in the nesting box overnight, or longer, to make sure those mothering instincts have set in. Then move her eggs to the area you've set up and quietly set her next to her eggs where she can see them. Leave her alone and try to minimize disturbances. Hopefully she'll settle right down and start incubating those eggs. If you're having a hard time getting your hen to stay on the eggs, consider moving her to a quieter place or somewhere where she's more comfortable, such as a pen right next to or inside your main coop. If all else fails, you can let her sit the whole time inside a nesting box. The downsides to this method are that other birds will climb in there and disturb her. Her eggs are much more likely to get broken, and you'll need to check every day to remove any new eggs that were laid in there. Make sure the original eggs have some kind of X or mark on them. Nevertheless, I successfully hatched a few batches of eggs this way. You'll need to move her to a separate pen as soon as your eggs start hatching so the chicks don't tumble out of the nesting box. Once your hen sets or settles down on the eggs to stay, all you need to do is make sure that she has food and water right outside her nest. Chicken eggs take 21 days to hatch, while turkeys and most ducks take 28. It's normal for the hen to get off the nest and stretch her legs two to three times a day. She shouldn't leave the nest for more than 10 to 20 minutes at a time. Optionally, you can candle the eggs at 7 and 14 days to remove any that are infertile or have died. Eggs are candled by holding the blunt end to a flashlight in a dark room. A properly developing egg will have a network of veins, starting at around one week incubation. Later on, you might just see a dark mass. Often you can see the chick moving inside the egg. An infertile egg will show just the round shadow of a yolk, or nothing at all, while an egg that has died will have a red ring around the outside of the egg. White eggs are the easiest to candle. Dark brown or blue eggs are harder to candle and may just look dark inside. If all goes well, your eggs should start to hatch after 20 to 21 days. A normal hatch rate from 14 eggs is 7 to 12 chicks. Chicks that have a mama just need food and water and a place safe from predators. They don't need a heat lamp unless you have unusually cold weather. Happy hatching!